Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease. As part of the binary search question series, today we are going to solve find and mountain array. So we have been doing mountain array related questions since quite some time. We first did how to check whether uh, we covered questions like valid mountain array and we recently also did a question on uh, how to find a peak element in a mountain array. I would highly recommend to check out uh, those questions. I would highly recommend to check out the latest question which is how to find the peak element in a mountain array because uh, we are going to borrow concepts from that. I'm going to link up the question in the description below and also I'm going to link it up above. So coming to this question, it said that what is a mountain array? Uh, first of all, the first condition is the length of the array should be at least three elements greater than equal to three. And there exists some i where the elements from zero till i are in the increasing order. And then from the elements from i till the end of the array, the elements are in decreasing order. So this i whatever is given is basically the peak element which we talk of. So the peak element is something like all the elements were left hand side of the peak element are in an increasing order, strictly increasing order and the elements to the right hand side of the peak element are in the strictly decreasing order. So the task for this question is we are given this mountain array. We have to write minimum index such that the mountain array dot get of that index is equal to target. Basically, we have to find out the given target in the given mountain array. If the index does not exist, then we can return minus one. Simple, plain and simple binary search thing, searching algorithm to be used to, so it's, it's a simple application of uh, trying to search an element in a given array. If it exists, return the minimum index. If it does not exist, then we have to return minus one. But the condition is you cannot access the mountain array directly. So as we can see in the right hand side, we are not given the array. We are given an interface. So this is the mountain array interface and we are given access to these methods. So using this instance, we have to, uh, uh, so using this instance, if you want to access any element of that array, we are going to use, we are going to call this get method passing in the index. And if you want to get out the get the length of this array, we need to use the length method. Last point is submissions making more than 100 calls to mountain array dot get will be judged as wrong answer. So this is a, a clear indication that we have to write an efficient algorithm and uh, and we should not be unnecessarily making lot of get calls to this uh, uh, to access the array. So in a way, they are trying to say that write an efficient algorithm and we know that if we have to search for an element in an array, we use the popular algorithm, which is binary search. So in this way, given a question, this is how we can find out which algorithm can be used. So let's like, take a look at this example. So this is the array in which uh, the target is 3. You have to find out 3. So 3 exists in the array. 3 also exists here at the beginning and also over here at index 2 and 5. So since we have returned the minimum index, we return 2 over here. Now if you look at this array, what is the peak element of this array? The peak element of this array is 5. If you notice, all the elements on the left hand side are in the strictly increasing order till they reach the peak element. After that, all the elements are in the strictly decreasing order. In the second example, however, we are not able to find out the target 3, hence the output is minus 1. So now let's try to understand the approach for solving this question. So we'll discuss the approach to solve this question. So first of all, how does a mountain array look, look like? So if I do a visual representation, it looks uh, something like we have the elements like 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is the peak element. After that, all the elements will be in the decreasing order. So it can be something like 2, 1 and 0. So these are the elements in the mountain array. And we have to find out our target is, let's say, 2. We can see 2 is here also, 2 is here also. And you have to return this is the minimum index, that is index 1. So this is how a mountain array looks like. Next question is, why do we even apply binary search to it? Because, of course, we are trying to search for an algorithm. And second thing is, if you notice carefully, this part of the array, which is the numbers before the left, uh, before the peak element, is, a, is in strictly increasing order. Means they are in ascending order. Which means they are sorted in ascending order. And then the elements on the right hand side of the peak element are in strictly decreasing order. Means they are sorted in decreasing order. So we have two sorted sequences inside the array. Because, and that is the reason it is easier for us to apply binary search to it because they are partially sorted. So now that we know that the array given to us is partially sorted, we know that there is a peak element in the array and we have to search for a given target. Now how do we search this actually? Can we not directly apply binary search to this algorithm like a plain simple algorithm? The answer is no because this array is partially sorted. If we apply the normal binary search algorithm to it, whatever conditions we have, the traditional conditions like ARR of mid equal to target uh, and then checking the other highs and lows boundaries, it is not going to work because of this, this thing. Like there is a scenario where the element 4, which is the peak element, is greater than the next element. Every Here it is in ascending order, here it is in reverse, like in decreasing order. So because they are not sorted in one single order only, we cannot directly apply binary search to it. So what we have to do is, first of all, we know that we have two sequences. One is the ascending sequence, one is the descending sequence. Means if at all we have to apply binary search, either we can apply binary search in this portion of the array or we can apply binary search in this portion of the array to find the element. 
So first thing to do is to find out the peak element. If we are not able to find out the peak element, we are not able to divide the array into two different halves. So first thing is to find the peak element. And this is the reason why I told at the beginning that if you guys have not watched the video on how to find the peak element, you need to do this because uh, we are going to borrow the same concept over here also. Given an array, first of all, find the peak element. So we'll have the method to do that. Once we have got the peak element, now there are going to be two things. Either the peak element, whatever we got, the, that particular index is, is actually equal to the target, might be possible. If the target was 4, peak element is also 4, so we have found the element, so we can return this. Or what we can do is we have to search, this is number 2, so number 1 is this, number 2 is search in both halves, like in the ascending half of the array and also in the descending half of the array. So we can do something like, first of all, we will search from 0 to peak, so peak is going to be anyway the index of the peak element. So first of all, search from 0 to peak means search in the first half of the array where it is in ascending order. And then we can search from peak plus 1 to n minus 1, the last, the last element of the array. So we can do that. So if it is not found in this, in the first array, first half of the array, we can try to search it in this half of the array. And of course, it is, if it is not found, we are anyway going to return minus 1. There is one more thing which uh, uh, we are going to learn in this is so far we have used a binary search algorithm, uh, the code which we have written in which we usually assume that the array is already in ascending order, sorted in ascending order. But this time, we are going to use a binary search agnostic algorithm. What is that? So, search agnostic algorithm is basically, see, in the first half, it is in ascending order, sorted in ascending order. In the second half, it is sorted in descending order. Now, if we cannot write two different uh, code for uh, doing the binary search operation, right? So, by, by this agnostic algorithm, what we will do is, we are going to use a Boolean flag to determine whether the array which is given to us, the first half or the second half, whether that is in ascending order or that is in descending order. Accordingly, we are going to manipulate the low and the high pointers within the code itself instead of writing a separate method for uh, the ascending part of the array and another separate method for the descending part of the array. So that logic, uh, that code also we are going to see in this uh, example, in this video today. So to sum up, first of all, find out the peak element, then check whether the peak element is actually equal to the target. If not, then try to search from 0 to peak. If the element is found in 0 to peak, good. If it is not found, then obviously it is going to return minus 1. So if this part of the return uh, array returns minus 1 means we have to search it in other half of the array. If there also it is not found, we are going to return minus 1 anyway. So that is all about the approach for solving this. Uh, I am not going to cover the approach of how to find the peak element because that is going to uh, make the video unnecessarily longer because we have a separate video to deal with that. However, we are anyway going to write the code uh, for that um, uh, as we write the code for this. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Next, we are going to see how to write the code for this. Okay, so now we are going to start with the code changes. So I've already written the uh, logic for how to get the peak element. So because we have already done this in the previous video separately, so I didn't want to uh, increase the video time by just writing the code for that. However, I'll do a, a quick overview of what we are doing in this. Clearly, to get the peak element, what we have done is there are only two conditions that we have uh, we have to write apart from the normal binary search logic. In that, what, what we are doing is we are checking the mid element which is at the mid and the element which is at the mid plus 1. So if we take a look at this example, let's say anywhere between, I mean, if uh, the mid lies anywhere in the ascending part of the array, like before the peak element, we'll simply try to do low equal to mid plus 1 because we are trying to find out the peak element which is going to lie in the right hand side because we are in the ascending part of the array. Or the other uh, uh, possibility is we are in the descending part of the array, which is peak element onwards. So if at all we are in the descending part of the array, possibility is that the element which we are at means the ARR of mid, that itself will be the peak element. That is why we are storing that answer as in the peak element index, which is actually equal to mid. And then we are decrementing the high pointer. That let's try to check now in the, in the left side if there is any other peak element or not. So that is the plain and simple logic that we uh, try to do to get the peak element. Now, coming back to our question, uh, what we are doing. So, like we discussed in the whiteboarding that if we get the peak element, the first thing which we have to check is if this peak or rather I can do like if mountain arr dot get dot peak, if that is actually equal to target. It is possible because if the peak element itself is the target that we already have. So, if that is the case, we are going to return true. Uh, we are going to return uh, peak because we have return the index. Otherwise, we are going to try to search in the left hand side of the array, the left half of the array or in the right half of the array. So for that, what we will do, we will do left index and now we will apply the binary search agnostic which I was talking about. The binary search algorithm but the agnostic form of the algorithm we are going to write in which 
we are of course going to pass in the target the array the array instance and the start and the end pointer so the start and end pointer for this case will be from 0 to peak then we are going to check if left index if this uh, whatever we are um, whatever is being returned by this if this is equal to minus 1 means we have not found the element in the left half of the array then what we will do is we are going to return the same binary search agnostic but we are going to return but we are going to now search in the right half of the array and now we are going to search from peak plus 1 to the end of the array and finally we are going to return the left index which basically means if at all the left index exists and it is not equal to minus 1 then obviously this condition will not be executed and it is going to return the left index but if it is equal to minus 1 means we didn't find the index uh, the element in the left half of the array so we are now going to search in the rest half of the array and return that as well and return that instead so it's going to be the structure of the code in this part of the array okay so now what is left for us is to implement to write the implementation for binary search agnostic function so now we are going to write the code for this so in this binary search agnostic algorithm is nothing but the same old binary search algorithm only it's just that based on the flag now we are going to decide how can we manipulate the high and the low pointers so that we can find out the element irrespective of the order of the elements whether the array is sorted in ascending order or whether the array is sorted in descending order so what we do is in this we create this boolean we call this is ascending and we check the element at the start and the end so we will do something like mountain error dot get the element at the start and we check if this element is less than mountain error dot get of end what this means is if the array is sorted in ascending order obviously the first element is going to be lesser than the last element like 1 2 3 4 5 1 is lesser than 5 but if it is opposite, if it is sorted in descending order, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5 will always be greater than 1. The first element will always be greater than the last element. So that is why if this condition is true, then is ascending variable is going to store true. So that means that whatever array has been passed in, in this is actually sorted in ascending order. After that, it is just the usual. So we can have the low equal to start, then we can have the high equal to end, then we'll have the while loop, while low less than equal to high. We we'll calculate the mid. Now, first thing, what is what do we do? We check whether the element at mid is actually equal to the target. So we'll do mountain error dot get mid if that is equal equal to the target. Possible. So if that is the case, what do we return? We return mid. This is something which is common to everything, like whether the array is in ascending sorted or descending sorted. After this, now we are going to make use of the flag. If is AC, if it is true, if it is sorted in ascending order, we are going to use the usual logic what we do for binary search so in that what we check we check whether the element is greater than the element at mid or lesser than that so mountain array dot get mid if this element if target is greater than, than this element if obviously it is greater than the uh, this element we need to look in the right hand side of the array so in that we'll just increment the low pointer low equal to mid plus one if not we will do high equal to mid minus one this is the part in which the array is sorted in ascending order but if, if the array is not sorted in ascending order, means it is in uh, descending order. So what is so that part will be executed by this else block. So this will be executed when the array which we have passed is sorted in descending. So in that what we have to do, we just have to invert the condition. Not the conditions, I mean the high and the low uh, pointer which we are doing. So same condition, I'll just copy this. So in here, if it is greater, now we are going to manipulate the high pointer. And if not, then we are going to manipulate the low pointer. That's it. And all of this is going to anyway execute within the while loop. Outside of this, since we have to return integer, we are going to return minus 1. So we'll run this. Oh, it's a typo. It's a mountain ARR. Okay, so we are going to submit. Okay, so it's accepted. So yeah, that was all about uh, this question. How to find an element in a mountain array. Hope you guys have enjoyed the session and understood uh, the different implementations that we did especially the binary search agnostic uh, algorithm that we discussed. I think with this, we are going to wrap up the binary search question series as of now. And uh, uh, so the takeaway from this would be how we are going to plug in different concepts that we have learned in different, uh, different questions and then assemble and consolidate all of those uh, together to solve some more complex questions. So in this case, if somebody knows how to get the peak element, that person would have already understood how to solve the rest of the question. So th this is how it works. We have to understand, we have to borrow concepts from other questions that we have solved and in all together we can solve the new complex questions. So yeah, that was all uh, about today. Thank you so much for watching the video.